Firing managers, what was your favorite firing? I had a repo man working for me who was enormous and had some anger issues. He'd stopped making his daily runs and was turning in false trip reports. I called him into my office to discuss the situation with him and it rapidly turned into him yelling at me, including phrases like, you're not my dad. Weird, I know. Anyway, my boss comes in to try to calm him down and told him to go home and then come back the next morning to discuss the situation. As soon as the repo man was gone, I told my boss that I was firing him if he came back. My boss told me that he'd take care of it because things would get too messy if I did it, which may have been accurate at that time. I was instructed to stay home the next morning so that the boss could talk to the repo guy. I came in at around 10.30 a.m. and there were three cops in our parking lot and as I walked up to the building, our repo man was being dragged out in cuffs and cursed out one of our salespeople who just happened to be walking by. When I got inside, I found the boss's office thoroughly trashed with chairs and paperwork everywhere. I'm sure glad I wasn't there to make things messy. The repo man called another manager who was a friend of mine looking for a job the next week. I'm sure glad that I wasn't there to make things messy. Ha, that totally made the story. Well, that sounds like it could have gone a lot worse. I mean, not a lot worse, but at least he didn't get violent against people. Working as a waitress over the summer, about 16, one of the meanest girls in school, Veronica, worked there too and would often switch up our tables halfway through a shift to take my tips, bump into me when I was carrying a lot of trays, petty things. One day, the manager pulled me aside and said the owner had ordered her to fire Veronica. But she and Veronica's sister were good friends. Could I do it? <laughs> that was a good day. Oh, nice. I once had to fire a woman who decided to not give a man his seizure meds and tried to frame it on another employee so she, in fact, would get fired. Firing that woman was amazing. Used to manage a pizzeria. Had a shift leader that told me he needed to leave because his son went to the ER. This was like 10 minutes into his shift. I let him leave and closed the store myself. His wife came in to pick up his paycheck a few days later, and I asked if everything was okay with their son after the ER visit. She had no idea what I was talking about. Fired him 10 minutes into his next shift. Pro tip, make sure you get your significant other on board when telling your boss your kid went to the emergency room to skip out of work. Oh, I hope I'm not too late. We had a contractor at my old job, call him Jay, who was basically leaving for most of the day and working on other clients' projects on our company's time. The day he was supposed to be canned, Jay's company manager came by with an ice cream cake as a thank you for your business treat for our team. Our manager put the cake in the break room, sent out an email to draw people out of the cube town, and used it as a cover to confiscate Jay's laptop and escort him out of the building. Jay's manager inadvertently provided ice cream to celebrate his firing. It was delicious. There are a lot of people in this thread getting fired with names starting with Jay. I'm beginning to think it's all one guy. I fired this girl without the permission of my company once. Essentially, I had been told to hold on to a freelancer through the holiday push, utilizing her desire to get a full-time role to ask her to sacrifice her own Christmas to make up for all the extra work of the season, e-commerce. I was informed that we weren't going to offer her a full-time job, though, and I knew she had another full-time offer with the other company she was freelancing for. She'd been holding out to work at my company and was at risk of losing the other offer while she was waiting to see what my company would do. Of course, they hadn't told her they weren't going to hire her. They instead asked me to imply that she would get an offer with a good enough holiday push. They were going to say any amount of work she did wasn't enough to get the offer and let her lose a real offer in the meantime. I essentially pulled her into an office and told her it was in her best interest to accept the other offer and to quit on the spot. I was pulled into a room with the CEO and some others to justify why she'd quit after talking to me, but I just couldn't have it on my conscience. She took the other job, and we made it through the holiday without her. I managed my team she was freelancing for, so I absorbed most of that extra work. But I'm so glad I chased her away instead of lying to her. This is not a thread where I expect to hear a lot of heartwarming stories, but I'm glad we got this one early. Good on you for having actual morals and helping that person out. My absolute favorite was a guy my boss hired who was an absolute whiz in the shipping department. 
He'd find people on the golf course, talk with them while golfing, and hire them. The guy comes in, and I learn he's been hired with a quick phone call to my GM, so I get all his paperwork filled out and send it over to HR. Give him a good orientation on the company rules, break times, lunch, etc., then walk him back to shipping. Jake is my manager back there and a good guy. He's not the fastest, but he shows up every day, does an adequate job, almost never makes a mistake, and if he does, he fixes it without being a little B. I hand off the new guy and go back to work. A little over an hour later, it's break time, and I go to see how the new guy is doing. I stop in with Jake, and he says the new guy is out back and says nothing more. I find the new guy out back smoking a bowl. He looks up at me, clearly stoned, and says, Hey, computer dude, what's happening? Me. Come up front. I need to fill out some paperwork on you. I'm letting you go for violating our drug policy. The policy I read to you about 90 minutes ago? Him. Dude, that's fricked up. I quit. Wow, must have been high while touring, too. A boss hiring someone for you who turned out to be bad for the job. Well, this seems like a fun time to tell my only firing story. I was the delivery supervisor for a bakery and was supposed to be in charge of hiring a new delivery driver for our in-town deliveries, but the owner of the company hired someone sight unseen because he was in the delivery business. Well. I get there, and it's a guy in his 60s who can barely walk faster than a shuffle. Turns out his delivery experience was tossing newspapers out of his car window while driving around. The guy couldn't even carry the flats of products into the delivery van because of his bad back. He was nice, but literally just couldn't do the job. So I called the owner of the bakery, told her I was firing the guy, and that if she didn't let me hire the next person, I would quit. That was almost 10 years ago, and guess what? The guy I hired is still working there doing great. This might be the longest comment I've ever left. Yikes. Oh, by the way, I did try for like two days to figure out ways to accommodate the guy so he could do the job, but he was unwilling to even try half the stuff I suggested. Just insisting he just wouldn't do that part of the job and would leave it for me. My boyfriend's story. He fired a lady in her 50s at Walgreens because instead of patiently going through this customer's intense coupon book, she became extremely frustrated and just told the customer to leave. So she essentially allowed a woman to walk out of Walgreens with upwards of $200, all because she was too lazy to enter her coupons. Why don't I ever get people like this when I'm out shopping? Had to fire an IT support technician because he stole an admin username and password, logged into Active Directory, and changed his job title to Ninja Computer Wizard. Also had to fire a guy because he got pee drunk one Saturday night and decided to visit the office. He badged into the building and peed on the floor. We have security cameras, and his badge identified him specifically. He had an admin login, and the worst thing he did was change his title? Count yourselves lucky. I fired my best friend in high school. He knew it was coming, though. The night before, we had been hanging out at the arcade, it was the 80s, and when we went to leave, his car wouldn't start. He was scheduled to work the next day and told me that night he wouldn't be in as he had to work on his car. Next day comes, I'm opening the restaurant, and he didn't show up. I called the manager. She said he's fired. I called him, told him he's fired. He picked me up after work, and we hung out some more. Easiest firing ever. I'm surprised by such a degree of maturity, as he didn't blame you, and someone apparently lacking sufficient maturity to make alternate transportation arrangements. Fired a guy at my work who was just way too timid. The guy avoided confrontation like the plague and just couldn't get his work done on time because of being too afraid to ask for help. Even after numerous chances to improve and being put on a performance improvement plan for 12 weeks with copious amounts of retraining, he just couldn't bring his work up to scratch. He was such a nice guy, and it really pained me to have to fire him, as we knew he relied on his job. FYI, anyone that thinks firing people is fun, it's about the worst thing you can do. It sucks hard. When I delivered the news that he was fired and thanked him for his service, blah blah, he calmly stood up, put on his jacket, walked to the door, and flipped me the bird, then left. Didn't say a word. Part of me wanted to rehire him just for that. I actually have one. I work at a senior living facility. We hired a cook that was a raging alcoholic apparently one night. She got drunk, proceeded to call all the other cooks, and told them she's the boss and they'll all have to listen to her or they're fired. She was fired the next day. Then had the nerve to ask for her job again a month later. We hired a cook that was a raging alcoholic. But you repeat yourself.
Many years ago, I fired a teenage employee for going into our address database, looking up his friend's phone numbers, and changing their name and address to something awful slash juvenile. Great fun until he accidentally processed a live order for Mr. Big Disposable Douches, who lives at 123 Cotton Pony Lane. The best part? I had to fire him that day. It was December 24th, Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, you're fired. Love, Ebenezer. Practical jokes at work are often necessary in order to not lose your mind at some jobs. Knowing where the line is for those jokes is also necessary. I'm not a firing manager, but I aided in the firing of one woman. I was working in a restaurant in a small town at the time, so everyone knows each other's business. Or so I'd think. They hire this lady named Jenna, we'll call her. No one knew of her history but me. She and her husband stole hundreds of dollars worth in tools from my dad's auto mechanic shop five years back. She also will purposefully trigger her son's autistic attacks in public as a distraction to steal things. Anyway, I was super nervous as I had to train her and she knew dang well whose daughter I am. She played dumb and I played dumb back. I decided I'd give her a second chance. Maybe she got clean and needed one. I was wrong. Money would fall out of her bra all the time. We were hostesses, so we didn't get direct tips. Even after she'd put her wallet away. She also chased a customer down for a smoke, aka pills, and was so loopy she had to get sent home. They were gonna train her to be a manager. Finally, the other managers caught on she was stealing the waitress's tips after bussing tables and I came forward. She never realized in her drugged up state that they had cameras everywhere and I was able to identify when and where she was stealing. She got fired that night. That's what you get for stealing from my dad, B. Also, she introduced me to a Hells Angel leader. His wife asked if I would join an MLM with her. I've never noped so quickly in my life. I used to manage a paintball field while I was in college. The owners were happy to pay me fairly because all the other employees were 14 years old and could be used as minimum wage slaves. Ergo, I got a lot of dumb crap from kids at their first real job. I left a new hire alone to take a group out on the field and when I came back he was beside himself to show me the coolest thing he's discovered. He proceeded to pour hand sanitizer on the plywood counter and light it on fire. A plywood counter in a plywood hut that is filled with compressed air tanks and surrounded by dead grass and dry forest in the middle of a bad forest fire year. I couldn't get him out of the shack and off the property fast enough. You fired him before he could fire you. This is why we shouldn't let 14-year-olds work. Still at that age where you just don't make the smartest decisions. Then again, for some people, I don't think they hit the smart decision age until they're somewhere in their early 50s. This isn't necessarily a favorite, but it happened. Several years ago, I was a bank branch manager. I was being transferred to another branch across town and had to fire a teller on my first day in the branch. About a month before, the teller had cashed out a bad check for a few thousand dollars. He didn't check the correct ID and let the money walk out the door. Shortly after, before the mistake was found out, he was in a car accident and had to miss a few weeks of work. He was due to return to work the same day as my first day in the branch. My region manager had told me about the situation, but they couldn't fire him because he hadn't been back to work since they found out. So that morning, I came in, said, nice to meet you, come sit down, you're fired. I have to ask, if that isn't your favorite firing story, why the hell didn't you just tell us your favorite? You hanging on to that one for sweeps week or something? I fired another pizza delivery driver. To be clear, I had no authority to fire this person. No one in the store at the time did. It was his second shift. We were swarmed and he was taking forever. Eventually, he disappears for two hours and comes back, says, Couldn't find it, so I just ate the pizza. I told them to get the frick out and never come back. Everyone on the store witnessed this and his excuse, so the firing stuck. I go to church with a guy who is the HR manager at a food processing plant. This is a story he told a group of guys one night. A woman came in half an hour late, completely drunk, staggeringly drunk. So her direct manager took her to the HR manager, who then contacted a company who will come and administer a breathalyzer test. While they waited, this woman would let loose some of the stinkiest farts he had ever smelled. She wasn't even trying to hide them. She would lean over, let one loose, then giggle. Once the company came to administer the test, she wouldn't blow hard enough to register a reading, which means non-compliance. Three non-compliance attempts means an automatic firing. 
That is how it ended. She was escorted out of the building. And just like that, she was gone, like a fart in the wind. Firing the guy that was stealing a lot from me. I couldn't figure out why my profit margin had dropped 5%. I never considered anyone stealing. Then a woman came in because she was overcharged. I gave her the money she was owed. Then I looked into it further. That day's sales report should have been over the same amount as the overcharge. It was not. I then set several employees up by loading the drawer with an extra $20. His drawer was the only one to show no overage. I then caught him on camera. After figuring out who it was, I kept hearing stories from people about his strange behavior. Why the heck they didn't say anything before this is beyond me. I still have the footage on my phone. If anyone called me out about firing a well-liked individual, I say nothing. I just show them the video. Their faces are priceless. Well investigated, documented, and executed of you. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. I worked for a security company for over two years before quitting to become an EMT, this being last year. My last five months on the job, I was promoted to third shift supervisor. We were contracted out to a large factory that also had a janitorial slash maintenance company contracted out as well. Whenever any employee was to be fired, they would be brought out to our guard shack in front of us to be told the bad news, where we in turn would escort them to their vehicle. So there's a young guy we'll call Jay that works for the janitorial company and he's probably the laziest employee in the whole plant. Today was the final straw for his supervisor since he sent Jay to clean the North End locker rooms and he spent the entire shift sleeping instead. They call Jay into the guard shack, tell him he's fired, and I stand there ready to escort him out. Right after Jay heard the bad news, he does an about face, walks right past me, and stops at the front desk to ask my security guard if he can have an application for our company. His former boss and I yell no in complete unison. I got to fire someone before they were even hired. He's pretty ballsy, gotta give him that. I got one, let's call him Jeff. Jeff was a freaking nutcase. I'm certain he spent the entire 80s on coke and doing crappy karate. I didn't hire Jeff, my boss did. I was his direct manager. Jeff didn't have a house, he lived in an RV which he ended up parking on the property. Cool, whatever. So I start to train Jeff on his daily duty of the shop. This is where living in an RV starts to make some sense. On days it was me, another employee, and Jeff, we had a moment to rest as our busy time ended. So I sit at my desk and start doing paperwork while my great employee and Jeff start to talk. Jeff starts his story along the lines of, you ever watch Miami Vice? Other employee, Jay. Yeah, I've seen it. That was based on me, man. I was Miami Vice undercover. I've seen some crap, man. Jeff says to him. I glance up from my desk and see him walking over to the mop bucket and picking up the mop. He then starts screeching and doing the worst moves I've ever seen with it, like some cracked out white ninja that had forgotten anything he'd ever learned about anything. I see Jay trying his hardest not to laugh. I follow suit and try. I get a grip and ask, why aren't you a cop anymore? To which he replied, because it was a bunch of politics and I was a loose cannon, he says as he put the mop back. I said, you don't say, then listened as he told his story about riding a motorcycle in circa 1980s Miami as he was trying to take down a crime lord. My boss did this sort of thing. He'd hire people, anyone really, then give them to me to train and manage them. He had an ability to pick out the most insane people in the state. His last two weeks, I came in to watch the previous night's tapes. I had to review them daily in order to ensure no theft had happened due to employees stealing a lot. There he was, Jeff in all his vice glory, standing in a hallway in the middle of the night, doing his crack karate with a mop stick. He then went on patrol with it in the parking lot. Some customers complained, and I let him go. My boss hired, I trained, fired the ones that couldn't make the cut. He flipped out like you'd think. Cops were called, and we ended up banning him from the property as he would sneak on every night and sabotage things. That's another story, though. Well, now I want the other story. Joke is on you. Jeff is still an undercover vice cop. And your boss? Yeah. Guess who the crime lord is? Nice going, OP. You really screwed that one up. I'll give a friend of mine's. He worked loss prevention at a store that you could shoot at. He saw this pretty girl who worked there and decided to go talk to her and ask her out. So he walks up in his loss prevention uniform, and the first thing she says is, Is this about the CD player? 
So my friend keeps his cool and says, I just want to give you the opportunity to tell your side of the story. It turns out she's stealing all kinds of crap and he cracked the case and canned her butt because he's a horn dog. Out of all the firings, I only had one that I actually got enjoyment out of. I had a girl that was young, just a few months past 21. She was already on her final strike for a no call and not doing her job well at all. She was set to open with another girl at 9 a.m. with me already being there since 8.30 a.m. First thing when I walk in the door, she's calling in sick with a horrible flu. I tell her to rest up and if she needs extended time off, I'll need a doctor's note. I'm annoyed, but she called, so whatever. However, once one of my openers came in, her world was destroyed. See, when you're Facebook friends with all of your coworkers, they can see all your updates. So when you post a photo of yourself completely crap-faced four hours before your shift with the caption, so frickin' wasted, you kinda buy your own death certificate. I seriously laugh whenever I think about it. I get the feeling she does too. Ah yes, the old beer flu. Can't say I enjoyed firing anyone, but the most memorable was the girl who, after being fired, locked herself in the boardroom and refused to leave the premises until we paid her off. This was a small company with no security, and instead of getting the police involved, we gave her about $200 or so, and she left in peace. I'd say, your wish is granted, and once she comes out, proceed to push her back in the room and lock the door from the outside, laugh my butt off. In our deli, we had a girl named Jessie, who worked for us for about eight months before she realized she wasn't going to get the experience pay a crappy HR promised her, and decided to get another job. But she wanted to stay on board with one foot in the door just in case what she had didn't pan out so well, so asked to work one day a week. This was fine by us, she was a good worker and we could use the extra help, so she decided to work Sunday evenings. It soon became clear that Jessie really wasn't feeling it. Her work ethic dipped, she spent more time on her phone, and she called off. One night she asked to go home early, and when a manager wouldn't let her because the rest of the staff would suffer for it, she just left anyways. The next week she came back and we told her she couldn't behave like that. It's unfair to her co-workers, but she blew us off like it was no big deal. The next week, she doesn't show up at all. We call her and she doesn't answer, so we assume she's finally done. I tell management to make moves to terminate her. We usually don't bother with formalities, but I was a bit miffed at how she had so easily disrespected her co-workers and tired of her BS. Almost two whole months passed without any mention of Jesse. Then suddenly, one day, I get a call from the front office. Um, Jesse's here asking for an override to clock in? I go up front and yep, there she stands in her uniform, ready to clock in. I burst out laughing and told her she doesn't work here anymore, and to my great shock, she's actually peed off. She says the deal was she would work Sundays. Uh, yeah, and you haven't called or shown for the last eight in a row. She tries to call the union, who tells her that more than three no-call no-shows in a row mean voluntary quit. We were free to terminate her, and she couldn't fight it after the third week. She got so flushed and angry and said, that's not fair, I didn't know that. Watching her storm off was pretty satisfying. Learning she had her hours cut from her new job and wanted to come back from a coworker close to her was even better. Folks, moving up is great, but don't burn your bridges. <laughs> I actually had the opposite, where I had worked at a GameStop part-time, then I got a full-time job elsewhere and just did weekends at the GameStop. Well, after a few weeks, they didn't put me on the schedule, then continued to not put me on the schedule. Five months later of not working there, the former assistant manager, now general manager, called me and asked if I could work. I was like, what? I haven't been scheduled for months. Do I even still work there? Technically, I did. <laughs> and the assistant manager was a nice guy, so I came in to help that one day because they were short-staffed, but... I didn't even remember how to use the sales system. It was weird. I think most people who handle firing employees will tell you it's their least favorite part of their job. I know it was mine even in situations where it was warranted. And doing it for the first time on your own is downright terrifying. But I'm one of those people, and it was the worst part of the job, but mainly because I enjoyed my day-to-day -day activities and I had to give up time to deal with a butthole. Nobody likes firing people, but it comes with the territory. Asked some new drivers in my transport truck if they were felons because I, as a tow truck driver, carry a firearm. It's illegal in this state to be in a vehicle or residence with a firearm if you are a felon. Everybody said no, but one guy had to pipe up that I shouldn't be allowed to carry a gun because I'm an immigrant. He refused to shut up and do his job, so I fired him on the spot. 
It was his first fricking day. Had a guy get infuriated during job instruction and threw a bottle at me, dodged it, and told him he was fired. He then ripped off his ID badge and hurled that too. I smiled and said, I'm not gonna look for that, I'll just take it out of your last check. He turned red but found that dang badge and handed it to me. I had security in tow before he was even halfway out of the building, just in case. I worked fast food for years from high school through college and was in management for a majority of it. As a manager, I fired way too many people to count. Most of them just didn't want to do the basics, show up on time, try, and do a good job. Over the years, I was asked to help clean up a few stores. I usually went in and found out who was busting their butt to pick up other slack. I would give that person a good raise and either fire or cut the hours of the slackers. The store would take off in a positive direction. The guys busting butt have more money and are happy. The customers are getting better service and are happy. The morale of the entire store goes up. The owner is happy because he is saving labor and seeing more revenue. Happy owners tend to give out more perks for everyone. So firing the bad apples was pretty easy as it made a lot more people happy. What amazed me is the parents that would get their kid fired. We had a schedule and everyone had to put in time off. Parents would call in and say their kid wasn't going to be there because they just decided to go out of town that weekend. They thought the job was some sort of after-school club. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.